Hello beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zero, and welcome back to the How to Plan a Motorcycle Trip series. Today we're going to be talking about what if the bike breaks down. One of the first excuses that I hear a lot and also one of the first things that people worry about when they're getting ready to go on a trip by themselves for the first time is what if the bike breaks down? How do you prepare for that? This is a totally legitimate fear, especially on a motorcycle. Let's face it, it's a motorcycle, it's gonna break. The best way to prevent your bike from breaking down on the trip is to prepare before you leave. Take some preliminary steps and do some basic maintenance on your bike before you leave so you can get comfortable with your bike and how it works. Start with the most basic thing first. Do an oil change on your bike. Then familiarize yourself with how to clean and tighten your chain properly and all the bits and pieces that go along with doing that the correct way. Check the air filter on your bike. If your spark plugs are at a decent place to get at without having to take the tank off, Check your spark plugs, so you know how to do that. Check your tire pressure. Just do T-clocks, especially if you're new to this motorcycle or new to riding in general. That way you can get familiar with where all of the things live on your bike so that you're not trying to figure it out on the side of the road. While you're doing all this basic maintenance, make sure that you lay out all of your tools and keep track of what you're using and what you're not. If you use a particular wrench or some needle nose pliers or something like that, Put them aside and make sure that you pack those tools when you go. On top of all these tools that you use for the basic service of your motorcycle, I also recommend you carrying zip ties, duct tape or gorilla tape, electrical tape, a tire pressure gauge, a tire patch kit, and depending on what kind of tires you have makes the difference between whether or not you're going to get a tubeless tire patch kit set or a tube patch kit. Or you could just carry a whole new tube, but that also means you need to carry all the tools necessary to take a tire off of your bike and pull the tube out and put a new one back in. Especially for people who ride a lot off-road, flat tires just happen and it's better to be prepared for them to, than to not be prepared for them. Spare fuses, a spare master link if you have a chain driven motorcycle, and needle nose pliers, I could go on. <laughs> Another thing that dirt bike riders seem to find very useful is JB Weld, hint, hint. Even if you don't know how to use all of these things, that is totally okay. Somebody will show up who knows how to use those things or you will figure it out on the spot, which is how I learned how to use a lot of the tools that I own. <laughs> you would be really surprised how many things that you can do and can learn how to do when you're put into a situation where there are no other options and you have to do it. <laughs> I personally always carry the Chilton or Haynes manual or whatever kind of in-depth how-to manual on my bike if I know I'm gonna be gone for more than a week. Another alternative to carrying a big chunky book around on your motorcycle if you're gonna be gone for more than a week is to take pictures of the pertinent information in said book and leaving that book with somebody that you trust, that you know is going to respond when you call them on the side of the road and say, hey, I need you to take a picture of all the pages that tell me how to change my tire. <laughs> If you have absolutely no plans on learning how to work on your bike or getting your hands dirty at all, that is totally okay. It just means that you need to make a really solid plan about who you contact in case you break down the side of the road. And you need to have good roadside assistance and a way to contact people if there is no cell service. Good roadside assistance, in my opinion, should pretty much be mandatory if you own a motorcycle and plan on traveling more than 100 miles. Even if you can do everything possible on your bike on the side of the road, roadside assistance will pay for itself. A lot of insurance companies already have an option in their insurance policy that you can add on roadside assistance like I did with Progressive. There are also roadside assistance specific companies like AAA that you can sign up for. All right, now that we've got a little bit of the preliminary stuff out of the way, you get on the road and the worst happens and your bike breaks down. First off, if it won't start, do not just sit there pushing the start button until your battery dies. That's just gonna make all of your problems worse. <laughs> and on some bikes, that could ruin your starter. Just take a minute, take some deep breaths, take a little break, eat a snack, give yourself and the bike time to rest. Especially if it's an old bike. 
take in the situation and start with the simplest things first. Starting with, is the engine cutoff switch on or off? Is there gas in the tank? And I don't mean like, does the little dash say that there's gas in your tank? Actually open up the gas cap, swish it around and make sure there's gas in it. If there is gas in it and your bike has a reserve switch, switch it to reserve. Is the kickstand down? A lot of newer motorcycles have a kill switch in the kickstand and they won't start in gear if the kickstand is down. Number four, is it a bike that you need to hold the clutch in? Are you holding the clutch in properly? Is it engaging properly? All experienced travels know this list, but it can be really easy to look over really minute things when you're frustrated and you're in a hurry. Oftentimes it is the simplest solution. If you've gone through the first section of the simplest things to check and it still won't start, remember that all bikes, unless they're electric, need gas, air, and spark. Start by checking the simplest things possible and then work your way down the troubleshoot list from there. Hint, a lot of the Chilton Haynes climber manuals have a troubleshoot list for you to go through if there's something wrong with your bike and it won't start. These are just a couple of the things that I go through to make sure that the stress of my bike possibly breaking down doesn't keep me from going on the trip. Anybody who's been traveling on a motorcycle for a while has quite a few stories about the simplest thing being wrong and not finding out that until after going through a lot of hassle trying to figure it out. I have definitely had my fair share of these instances, including trying to start a bike that had run out of oil. <laughs> and also getting a bike towed 120 miles and finding out later that the only reason my bike wouldn't start is because a spider had made a web in my switch housing so that my starter button wasn't making contact. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know your story down in the comments. I would love to hear them. And if you do anything else to relieve the stress of what if the bike breaks down before you go on a long motorcycle trip, leave those down in the comments as well. I hope that you guys enjoyed this addition to the How to Plan a Motorcycle Trip series. Next time I'm going to be talking about a few packing tips and things that you can bring with you to help with the what ifs, not just of what the bike breaks down, but also the other what ifs that come along with camping off of a motorcycle. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon. You guys make these videos possible. I could not do it without you. If you like this content and would like to support this channel for as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to videos like these. If that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. I do have a Redbubble and an Etsy shop where you can get prints, stickers, t-shirts, all the good things with my motorcycle art on them. Links to all of that is down in the description. If that's not up your alley either, that is totally okay. I appreciate you guys just for watching these videos and I will see you later. Yeah, I know the heater is loud, but it's cold. If you couldn't guess by the fact that I'm wearing a big old fleece and a puffy jacket in this episode. <laughs>